in the next few videos, we're going to try and learn how two variables are related. So relationships in business are very important. We're not talking about whether Katy Perry gets along with Taylor Swift, but we're talking about variables in business. Our file will be linear cost 10. And so what we often have is an independent variable we call X that's used to predict the dependent variable Y. Some examples. We often want to use the size of a house in a particular city to predict the price of a house. The bigger the house, the more we think the house will sell for. If we look at the return on the stock market during a day, week, or month, or year, that should help us predict the return on a stock. Some stocks are tied more closely to the market than others. That involves the concept of the beta of a stock, which we will discuss later. Ad expenses. The more we spend on ads, we'd expect sales to go up, so we'd like to model that relationship. That's actually fairly tricky. The classic demand curve. Raise the price, you'll sell less. How much less? We'd like to know how price is related to demand. Units made in a month at a plant, let's say it makes refrigerators, influences the cost of running the plant. The more units we make, the more it costs to run the plant. And that'll be the example we first start with. So the first thing you should do when you want to understand how two variables are related is plot the points using a scatter plot. In Excel 2010, you can see the scatter option. In 2013, you can just click on the dots and see. So I want, in our example, we have units produced every month for 14 months. We have the monthly plant costs. We want to understand how knowing the units produced will help us predict the cost of running the plant. So we go insert, the dot here gives us the scatter plot options. Let's just do the dot for points. Okay, so if we look here, it makes sense to have a line fitting the points. It looks like there's a line that will go through those points fairly well. Now it's not always true when you plot the data that a straight line will be a good fit to the data as we'll see in the videos coming up shortly. But here a straight line looks good. What line fits the points the best? That'll be called the least squares line. So the least squares line, and this is the line Excel finds, you'll see. It takes the vertical distance of every point to the line, that's called the error, minimizes the sum of squared errors. And we square the errors, so positive negative errors, and negative errors don't cancel out. Okay, so to get the least squares line, all we do is right click add trend line, and the trend curve option menu comes up. We'll talk about exponential later. We'll talk about power later. I think we'll throw in moving average. Polynomial is more advanced. Maybe we'll talk about it in a future video. A plus BX plus CX squared. Logarithmic is Y equals A plus B log X. I don't think that's too important. But we should check display equation in R squared. Okay, now you see the line, and we have the equation of the line. Let's make this a little bit bigger because it's hard to see. So if I do control one after selecting this, I can make the font size, let's say 15. Okay, so now I can move this. I'm having trouble getting the little handle. Well, right there is fine. It doesn't seem, for some reason, I'm not able to get the handle to move this thing. So our equation would be Y, which is monthly cost, equals 64.269 times units made plus 37.894. You know, a straight line has the form y equals a plus bx. In other words, that means x up by 1, y always goes up the same amount. That's the definition of a straight line. That's the slope. So our slope here is 64.269. That's the variable cost, or the unit cost of producing a refrigerator. Unit variable cost. To make one more refrigerator, what does it cost us? And then the 
intercept or the constant is the fixed cost. In other words, if we weren't making anything, what would it cost us to run the plant for a month? And then the R squared or R control one superscript two. And I do control one, get rid of the superscript is 69% means our equation explains 69% of the variation of what we're trying to predict. which is monthly cost. 31% is not explained. And we'd like to find out what would explain that remaining variation. That would require more independent variables. That would be what's called multiple regression. Okay, so let's put in the prediction from this equation. We would get 64.269 times the units made plus 37,894. Copy that down. And then we always like to look at errors when we make a prediction. Errors are actual minus predicted. Actual cost minus predicted cost. And a nice property of, so of the least squares line is these errors should sum to zero. Now they sum to minus two here because due to rounding, I mean, we don't have the exact numbers here because we don't have enough decimal points. But, you know, in month one, cost was about 4,000 more than expected. Month two, 3,000 less than expected. But if we had this equation perfectly right to the more decimal points, and we'll see how to get that actually in the next video to get it exactly to how many de infinite, as many decimal points as we want using a slope and intercept function, the sum of the errors would be zero. That means the sum of the distance of the points above the line equals the sum of the distance of the points below the line. In a sense, the line splits the points in half. Okay, now if I want to predict the cost for next month where we made 1,100 units, all I would do is copy this equation down. In other words, if I made 1,100 units, I predict it would cost about $109,000 to run the plant that month. Okay, so we want to have a feel for the accuracy of our forecasts. We mentioned a few videos back that when the NFL sets, Las Vegas sets NFL point spreads, the standard deviation about those point spreads, which is a forecast, is 14 points. Okay, so what we want to look at here is what's the sort of the standard error of these forecasts from a regression. There's a function for that, STEYX. So if you do STEYX and you put the Y range first, which is the monthly cost, and the X range second, the units made, you get 13,771. We'd expect roughly two thirds of our predictions accurate within one standard error. And 95% accurate within two standard errors. And how big is that? And anything that's off by more than two standard errors is an outlier. So you can see none of these months were we off by more than 27,000, so there's no outliers. So for month 15, if we knew we we're going to make 1,100 units, I'd predict a cost of 109,000 and be pretty sure it'd be plus or minus 27,000 from that number. Now, suppose the cost came in 150,000. That would be 42,000 higher than expected. That's about three standard errors higher than expected. Very unusual. I try and figure out what made the cost high that month. If the cost was 60,000, that's basically about three over three standard errors expected. Uh, 60,000 would be 48,000 less than expected. That's over three standard errors less than expected. Again, I, that's really low. I would try and find out what caused the cost to be so low, and that's how you have continuous improvement. When costs are high, figure out what made them high and eliminate that. When costs are low, figure out what made costs low and make that keep happening. And that's a way to sort of implement what some people might call Six Sigma or continuous improvement. Okay, so in the next, 
that was a lot for one video. So in the next video, we'll show you how you could use Excel functions rather than the chart here to find out what the slope, the intercept, and the R-squared value are. So we'll pick up with that in the next video. Okay, so thanks for watching, and, and there's a free course, a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, and all of these videos are coming from one of three books. So first, this one, which you can see here at the top of the screen, um, Microsoft's book, which has 355 reviews, uh, and then it's, let's see, 4.6 stars. Um, it's coming from this book as well, his marketing analytics book, which is down here, and you can sort of see 4.5, or his newest book, his analytics stories book, which is here. And with that one, you can see it's four point something, or maybe even five. I don't think it's five. Yeah, 4.8. And so, yeah, anyways, in the description, there's a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, or you can go to excelwithwayne.com slash free, and it'll be there. But again, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just uh, please let us know. Thanks.